I live on the outskirts of a mid-sized town in Wyoming. The whole reason I live here is because owning a huge plot of land isn't as impossible of a task as it can be in most other states. My house is small, but it was cozy enough for living alone. This happened four years ago, in 2019. It was spring, and we were going through a month of pouring rain almost every single day. It was a Sunday, and I was home from work, spending the day watching TV and resting. Sometime around 6 or 7, I got an unexpected knock at my door. I barely heard it through the rain, and when I answered the door, I was even more surprised to see it was some random guy. Not a mailman or anything of the sorts. Someone coming all the way out onto my property without notice was very unusual, being that it was far out of the way. How can I help you? I said. The guy, looking somewhere in his late 20s, said he'd been camping out in the woods nearby and had gotten into some trouble and needed a place to stay for the night. With the location of my house, if he wasn't lying, then showing up at my doorstep would make sense because I was the closest place within the woods by at least five or six miles. It was also pouring out, which made me feel even worse for him, but it still didn't take away from the possible danger of letting a stranger into my home. I offered him a phone call to get a ride into town, but the guy denied my offer. After bluntly saying he couldn't stay here, the guy walked off. I watched him go down the dirt road a little ways, then he veered off and walked into the woods. As odd as that was, I didn't have it on my mind for more than a few minutes before I was back to watching TV. I didn't check the time very often, but it had to be at least two hours later and well into the night when I saw an orange glare coming from the window by my backyard. I got up and moved the curtain. Through the rain and fog, I saw a campfire right in the middle of the woods outside my house. It was small, flickering under a large tree as the rain poured down on it. Standing next to it, there was the outline of a figure holding something. I couldn't tell though if he was facing my house or into the woods. After a moment, I closed the curtains and picked up my phone, calling the police to let them know about this person outside my house. I knew it would take probably an hour for them to get here, and whoever was out there wasn't doing me any harm, but at the very least I wanted them away from my house before I went to bed. Once I got off the phone with the officer, I checked the window again. The fire was still burning lightly, but the figure wasn't there. Then I heard footsteps coming toward the house. I ran to the other window and caught sight of him walking past with a hunting rifle in his hand before he turned the corner and went to the front door. He banged on it a few times, then it went quiet. I grabbed my self-defense handgun from the hallway closet and hid around the wall, still trying to process the situation I was in. He hit the door again. This time I could tell it was with the stock of his rifle nearly breaking a panel out of the door. In this moment, I could only think that I had to try to deter him immediately before it becomes life or death for one of us. I shot around toward the edge of the doorframe, deafening myself for a second as the shot rang through the house. When my hearing came back, all I heard was the rain pouring down. No footsteps, banging, or yelling. I gathered up courage after five minutes of no sounds and looked out the peephole, seeing an empty porch and outside in the yard were clear footprints going away from the house. He must have run right after the shot during the couple seconds I couldn't hear. Police did a thorough search and found some strange details. Out by where the campfire was, they found a duffel bag with evidence of it having been buried nearby and likely dug up just hours before the attack. What they told me is that it was most likely a burglary kit, or possibly even a murder kit, that was planted in advance with the intent to be dug up and used later on. This means whoever attacked me had planned it and had been right outside my house at least once before that night. 
why he attacked me specifically is not known, and who and where he is currently is still no closer to being figured out than it was four years ago. I still live in the same house and worry every day that he might come back. I was 22 at the time and living in a very small one-bedroom house in the cheapest area of my city. After work on a Friday night, I hopped online to game with a bunch of my friends. It was the perfect night for staying up late, with heavy downpour outside and no work or school the next day. We played for probably two hours before a sudden sound had me put everything on pause for a minute. It was a thump sounding like it was upstairs. My initial concern was a possible leak in the roof caused by the rainfall, so I went up to look. The only rooms upstairs were the single bedroom and a half bathroom, and neither of them had any signs of leaks anywhere, so I ran back down and got back online with my friends. I was on for a while, only getting off at 2am because everyone else went to bed. I shut everything off and sat on the couch with some snacks while I watched YouTube on my phone. Ten minutes in, I heard another thump. It was from upstairs again, but it was so muffled that it almost sounded like it was on the roof or something. I did an even more thorough search of both my bedroom and the bathroom up there, but there wasn't anything showing itself to be the cause of the sound. I was sure it wasn't thunder either, because it vibrated through the walls like something literally hitting the house. After 10 minutes of looking around, I was so determined to figure it out that I put on my shoes and went out into the rain to see if there was something more noticeable from outside. At first I saw nothing of significance, but then I noticed a tree branch getting pretty close to the side of my house. It was a large and sturdy branch though that was a good three or four feet away from the siding, and even in the rain, it wasn't really swaying all that much. It seemed unlikely that it could reach the side and bang up against the side of the house. As I looked at it though, I realized there was a small window on the house that the tree kind of covered up. It was higher than my bedroom window, meaning it had to be an attic. I had no idea there was an attic at this house. The hatch was definitely nowhere noticeable, and the roof wasn't a steep slope, so it didn't look like there would even be room for one. This hidden window was the first clue I'd ever seen to indicate there being an attic. I went inside, even more curious than I was before, and started searching for this hatch that I had to have somewhere. It took a minute, but I found it inside my bedroom closet. It was small and perfectly smooth with the ceiling, basically blending in aside from the tiny gaps from where it opens. I stood up on a box and pulled it down, releasing a rusty ladder from the opening. Immediately, I was hit with a rotten smell, followed by another thump sound. From below, I could tell the attic was extremely short maybe two feet tall at most. I climbed up carefully and looked into this tiny space, basically a wide, dark tunnel, and at the end by the window, I could make out a figure, ducked down on all fours and looking straight at me. I almost fell off the ladder, trying to jump down and run away. I heard them shuffling around as I got my phone and left the house, calling 911 in my driveway. The cops got there and detained the man, who was just some homeless person. Apparently he climbed the tree up to the window and made his way in, staying up there for at least a week without me having noticed. The absurdity of it all was almost unbelievable. I moved out very soon after that, and every house since I've always checked the attics. But the one thing that has stayed with me is the image of that man at the end of the attic, on his hands and knees, staring at me with eyes resembling both fear and anger. In my mid-twenties, I worked at a retail store as the overnight manager. 
It wasn't a big place, and the only reason I was technically a manager was because I'd be the only overnight worker. So, I was in charge of checking stock, filling shelves, and sometimes receiving order shipments. I was very satisfied with the job and never found myself hating the work, and up until this, I hadn't had anything really happen. It was a weekday night, and a storm was just setting in as I started my shift. Over the first hour of being there, the rain had picked up, and the wind was hitting the building much harder than before, making a lot of noise. I was filling the shelves for the first two hours, trying to get the time-consuming tasks out of the way first. As I was in the aisle though, I heard a thud sound resonating through the building. It sounded like it came from the back of the store in the warehouse section, where our delivery bay was. I walked over and saw the solid metal back door that truck drivers used to get in when making deliveries. The more I thought about it, the more I convinced myself that the thud sounded like a bang at this door, as if a driver was trying to make a delivery, but there were none scheduled for tonight. I opened the door and was met with a face full of cold rain and wind. I stuck my head out briefly to look down at the shipping bay and saw no trucks, so I closed the door and dried off. While walking back to the aisle, I assumed the noise was just the building having shifted a bit from the wind, or maybe just some strange sounding thunder that I hadn't noticed before. I continued working for another full hour before taking a lunch break in the back office, spending maybe 15 minutes there before heading back. But while I was walking through the store, I got this strange feeling, like everything had gone silent aside from the rain ticking on the roof. It gave me chills, and as I reached the end of the aisle, I saw something that made my heart almost stop. Right next to my cart, halfway down, was a line of wet shoe prints through the aisle. I approached it without even thinking, and tried to figure out how this was even possible. I followed them down to the front of the store, until I saw so many watery prints going all over that it was impossible to follow and honestly, horrifying to know that they'd walked around the entire place. I ran back to the office and locked myself inside, calling the police and waiting. As I sat there, I only got more scared as I couldn't see outside the office door, and the rain pouring on the building was too loud for me to hear anything else. After 10 minutes, the operator that had me on hold came back on the phone and said the police were right outside the building. I quickly got up and opened the door, and right on the ground was another set of watery shoe prints alongside mine, leading right up to the office I was in. I sprinted to the front and hurried to let the police in. In their search, they didn't find anyone in the store. Security tapes were reviewed not long after, showing us a man in a dark jacket entering the building through a side door that had been left unlocked. He clearly spotted me early on and stayed hidden until I went on break, then he walked around aimlessly. He didn't steal or break anything, he just went down the aisles and looked at the shelves. But the creepiest and most horrifying part was when I entered the office and waited for the police. The man came up to and stood outside the office door, waiting for several minutes as he stared at the doorknob like he was preparing for me to come out. Luckily, he decided to walk away a few minutes later and exited the store. No more footage of him was seen after that. The man never came back, and as far as I was told, he was never found. What he was doing that night is still uncertain, and it will likely remain as an eerie uncertainty for the rest of my life.